and maybe consult with the, the park foundation, see if any of it could be used, or for dog parks or something like that. They're going to have better utilization of that, in my opinion, than an economic exactly. development for a pilot. No, uh, we have no, we can't develop it economically for a So benefit. I move that we um, ask the city if they want to take over the park, walk south of Merrill. Okay. The sewer plant and whatever else they want to add to it. I have a motion that we uh, <coughs> consider deeding, uh, quick claim deeding, the Colorado Park to the city of Floridville. A second. So you have a second. Is there any further discussion? I'm sorry, can you repeat the motion? The motion is to for the FEDC to deed Conorondo Park to the city of Floridville. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. If there's no further discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion passed. Uh, H, I believe it is discussion, consideration, action on developing and implementing a new purchasing policy for FEDC. And I'm going to turn the floor over to Mr. Jason Powell. All right, let me pass these around. And um, I just want to make a draft that we'll just take a moment and, and read through it and I'll kind of highlight the, um, the, the main part. I do want to apologize because I was uh, writing the insurance requirements and a few other things and I had uh, almost 75% of it complete and I hit a delete button and the whole thing was deleted and it saved a little bit so I'm not going to retype it all. So anyway, but uh, this gives you an idea of what the policy would be like. This is uh, some conversations we had in the Finance Committee meeting. Uh, what we have said all along is that there has to be some form of purchasing policy and process in place to handle purchases with this group. And it needs to be part of the policies and procedures. Um, so, <clears throat> local purchases, it talks about um, uh, anything under $250. And that's what we had discussed in the Finance Committee meeting. Um, of course, this is open to discussion and, and changes. Um, it, it did indicate, and this is also copied off of the city of Seguin. They provided me their purchasing policy. This is a very small section of it, but this is probably all we need right now. We don't need to overcomplicate things. Um, <clears throat> talks about local purchases as defined as the city of Floresville businesses. I guess we could actually define those as even the county if we needed to, since we're not a big city here. Um, it does talk about stacking, uh, which is uh, something that I think we've seen in the other reports a little bit. That um, stacking means that you simply do smaller projects, and but they accumulate to one big project. And so we brought that up with Mr. Heimer here just a while ago. We want to make sure that we're not stacking these total costs that will exceed uh, or, or get into a bid process uh, part of the, the equation. Uh, when making purchases, of course, an invoice must always be obtained, all right, and, and we've talked about uh, those invoices attached to literally, um, well, check. What we've done in the office now is every invoice is attached to the uh, memo of the check that's been cut, okay? So when you go to the file, you can actually see that, all right? Then <clears throat> you go into the next portion here, so that means that he would have access to purchase things anywhere below $250, okay? Um, requests for quotes would be that, let's just say that we need some shredding done. Well, it's just a good practice to get three quotes. And those quotes would be on items ranging anywhere from $250 to $14,999. So if you think that these costs are going to be in that range, we would request quotes they would be brought before the board, and then the board would prove <coughs> which one we think would be best suited for that particular item. Hard copy of all quotes, of course, would be attached and then brought to the FDC for final board approval. Formal sealed bids would start at the threshold of 15000 I know that <coughs> Andy mentioned 25000 but I feel like the size of our organization needs to bring it down a little bit. You know, we very seldom deal with expenditures that are well over 25, and, and so um, that 
that's a consideration. The group here could say, hey, I don't agree with that. I think we need to take it back up to 25. You'll turn the page. <clears throat> you know, it talks about the uh, certain services that we could request for proposals. That's a little bit different. Uh, in other words, professional like CPA, legal fees, um, your auditor fees, you know, those can be proposals without necessarily being a still good. And that government code 2254 allows that to occur. Okay, so if we want to get those versus a still good process for those services. Item B was, uh, Seguin has this in their policy, and it's saying that if you have a local bidder, and their principal place of business would be the city, within the city limits, then you have a little leeway to award that contract to that person if it differs <coughs> no more than 3% above the lowest bid. Okay? Then for items above the 15,000 mark, they do a 5%, but in their city it's 50,000. Okay? And, and that first threshold for them is 25,000. So we've lowered our thresholds a little bit. Okay, the one thing that we don't have is the insurance requirements, which is, is written here, and you see that paragraph says that uh, the FEDC may, may require certain insurance coverage to be provided by contractors, vendors, and consultants. There will be an appendix to this, and what it would state is that uh, the FEDC has insurance requirements of the following, and it would read like this. Um, all vendors, contractors, providers um, working on FEDC property or the city of Floresville will be required to carry a million dollars combined single limit general liability. The FEDC would be named as an additional insured on that policy. The FEDC would also require certificates of insurance to show proof that you have that. In addition to that, products and completed operations as well as contractual liability endorsements would be on the policy, which is a standard deal in the insurance world. At the same time, they would have a commercial auto policy. Um, bonding could be discretionary. In other words, if we're going to hire a contractor for this bid, we're going to require a performance bond on those guys. Okay. Now, if we hire a guy to go shred, are we going to provide a performance bond? No. Okay. So I put in the paragraph that we would have discretion on bonding. Bonding typically doesn't take place until you have a project and it's for strictly the performance. We had a, a not we, but TechStop just had a contractor go bankrupt on the 281 project. I don't know if y'all saw that yeah. on the news. Well, so who steps in is the bonding company. Bonding hires the general contractor because the other guys went broke and they hired general to come in and finish the job. And that's what the performance bond does. And then, of course, uh, we can stipulate what the comp for certain things, et cetera, et cetera. So that's what the appendix uh, would read like, okay? Then there's another one that would be attached to this that would also stipulate that there are certain things like your water bill, your electric bill, you know, these reoccurring expenses don't require bidding because those are things that we have to get from certain vendors and we can't help it anyway, okay? And so that's all. Um, so there would be two attachments to that that actually fell off my computer today. You know, but this is something that if you like the way this reads, um, you could say, hey, yes, I like the basic premise of this, and we can improve that. And then we can improve the uh, insurance requirement language at another meeting. But it's going to be standard language. Um, I think it's well written so far. Uh, I don't have any problem with it. One thing that saying we attach a check e e commerce how do we have that because maybe we'll look at what someday when we're not using checks and we're going strictly electronic with our payments. Yeah. We made a lot of you know Well we do have that problem now because some of those payments are That's something that uh, probably needs to be addressed, and that's not necessarily addressed in this policy. This is restricted purchasing, but it probably needs to be added 
on how we address that uh, office management. Because that's part of the purchasing process. And you know, this, that would probably be a good place for it. But I don't have an answer on really a good way to handle that. But something that we have talked about, <coughs> when he does obtain three quotes, those three quotes are attached as well as the one that you selected. So that way there's never a question when somebody walks into our office and requests uh, an open records uh, request, or makes an open records request, that we can say, look, every one of these things we did follows the policy, and look, we have these quotes, and this is why we choose this one, or chose the, that one. And so uh, this is simply to protect us, but at the same time, to show the public that it's fair, well, it's structured. Right. It's structured. It's not been in place before. So. A couple of things I'd like to do, like on two and uh, I believe also B, where you have fourteen thousand nine ninety nine. There's a small one dollar window in there. That probably needs to be fourteen thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars ninety nine cents. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, if it's true. anything above fifteen thousand, right. need to go there. Uh, under consideration for. Bid for bid processes. Uh, I think most of us have been around and seen a lot of water under the bridge. Sometimes the lowest bid is not the, the best bid, even though they may be qualified according to all the facts and all. But uh, I would like to see there's some way that we may can uh, rate the bid possibly right into there so we can implement a bidding grading system or something like that, Jason, because I know that Google has had some projects that they bid out. Certain company got the bid two times in a row. They never finished either one of the bids, but they had to go back with them because they had the lowest and local. So I think that we might want to expand upon that. So that it's qualified quote. But it's a qualified. But it doesn't, just because you meet your qualifications of a bid, where you said made it out there and you had to provide the insurance and things like that. That doesn't mean that they're the most qualified. Somebody may have 30 days of experience and somebody have 30 years of experience. And in those things, they may submit the bid that it qualified, but we don't have the a way to grade these bids or right. something like that. Is there a way we can might can do that that we have an option to on the it might be to do a rating system on these yeah. bids too. And, and I'm not familiar with that, but I know what you're talking about. And um, the, cool uh, bit the city of Skeen would even have maybe some bid rating criteria, which I didn't see in any of the stuff they sent me, but they've been very willing to share. But at the same time, <clears throat> I bet Mr. Heimer has a good rating criteria with the kind of deals he does, deals with. So he might have a rating structure in place. Since he deals with some of those uh, contracts. And, and I'm not in a bank building when I build them, anything like that. Architect, we I rate them, we do scales of one or to nine or something like that. The school would have rating systems too. So there, there's ways around. I really think we ought to implement yeah, something that to give it some. I agree. I, I also, you know, let me just mention that, you know, uh, I think the numerous bidding profits. And I think uh, a key to that is that a lot of times uh, these uh, bidders submit references, and they're very important, let me tell you. They're very important because you see the project that they've done, and if you call to make to some of these people where they have uh, done jobs, you'd be surprised what they'll say. Even though they finished the job and everything, but uh, they were not very pleased with it. Well, another one, a big example is if you make a selection possibly off of the their turnaround time, their completion date estimates and all, that would be a big consideration. Just because they're cheap, it, but they can't start the job on this until October, that needs to be a consideration. If we do on these. So we need to factor in so that we'll be able to devise a, a rating system based on that type of job being bid. That. I, I appreciate the work you've done on this. Uh, where are you going to go from here, Mr. Jason, on this? Are you going to bring this 
in the form of recommendation with those amendments? Well, we I think, uh, you know, this is the first shot out of the box. I think this is something that um, we can bring back point. and uh, make amendments. I think we ought to get something in there about the rating scale for bids. I think that's a great recommendation. And then we have the uh, other attachments as well. So, but this was just something I wanted you to see. Take some time, read it. I asked them, uh, Mr. Ramirez, to put it on the uh, agenda just in case you liked it so well. You said, hey, we're going to uh, I appreciate the work you tell you did some diligence in there and, and efforts and all. And I think the board also appreciates that. Are there any further discussion? I don't think there's any action going to be taken on that at this point in time. So we're going to I discussion consideration action on amending fiscal year 2013 budget for FEDC. Yes, and once again, uh, I got into the the meat of the matter, and it's just taking a lot a little more time than I anticipated. So um, I'm hoping that we can have a good report. We're really close. Uh, we have um, the report where it's set up, where you have all the different columns, uh, but. I still have some details I need to work out on uh, some things. So I would recommend that we just take no action on that item instead uh, the next time. I had to uh, probably jump the gun in, in hopes that it would be done. But so it's going to be positive. So, so basically, we've got $671,000 in the bank. Mm -hmm. On that question, I can ask you time, but didn't do it. We have not paid for the McCoy. So that's 145000 dollars that's coming out of that regarding the committee. Right. Uh, in that same talk, speaking with Lloyd, uh, Lloyd this general comment, uh, you talked about uh, earlier to put in a contract. So, and I'll, I don't know if y'all noticed, but McCoy has listed that property oh, yeah, for front, up for sale. So uh, that may be something we all discuss again with Howard. Uh, possibly on recruitment fees if people sell their property after we've expended a lot of money, the cities have expended a lot of money, and then they turn around and, and profit off of the money we've done. That might be something we ought to consider. Definitely should. <coughs> well, once welcome again, we're going to come, but they don't, we don't abuse it, I guess. Once again. And I'm not saying they are, we just want to be, take that in consideration. Yeah, it's so a like, performance clause in the contract. Looks like a bunch of different things. It could be jobs, it could be this, it could be that, whatever. It could be repayment. But um, that definitely means any future contracts that we sign must have that. Well, I have come to the bottom of the agenda. I believe that we've exhausted the agenda item, so uh, there's going to be a big one. You heard that just kind of recap in between now. Uh, Ray and I are possibly around. Going to be meeting with Howard to discuss the contract. I'll take the contract and over and email it to Howard. Find out at a minimal time. We'll probably be calling a special meeting. I don't know when that's going to be at this time because I don't know what Howard, how fast he's going to be able to do that for us to work, come back and discuss this. Uh, and actually dealing with real estate, this could possibly be an executive session. Uh, to make, go back to them with the counter proposal. Is there anything else? Uh, Mary Ellen can be getting the applications. Mary Ellen can be getting applications that have been received, possibly setting out a personnel committee meeting. Uh, next board meeting, we're going to be considering the resignation of David, accepting his. So there's a lot of items that well, we'll have to do. With him yeah, that's correct. Uh, and it, as far as the question came up, we, while it is the city council uh, upon his resignation, at that point in time, we're going to have a vacancy. It'll be up to them whether they choose or not to choose to fill that. But that again is the city side. But we will, we will try to get that fulfilled and pass that information. Any other questions? Appreciate you coming. I know it's a heavy work day for a lot of people. Some of you came up here immediately. We're all busy. Still a lot of work being done, and I can't applaud y'all enough. I appreciate it.